I got a question here from a viewer, and his name is Ed. So Ed, here is your answer. Ed is a Jeep owner. He owns a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, Jeep Grand Cherokees um, are a unique kind of vehicle um, in some certain ways, particularly that they have a factory amplified system like the Infinity Six Speaker System. But you better go ahead and go ahead and lay it out for you. Hopefully, Ed, I get this right. Hopefully, after all these years, I should have it right. Let's hope. Okay, so up on your dash, you have the two factory three-inch speakers, which is going to be the, the main focus of this video is because it's, it's causing him a major problem. Front speakers, you have six and a halfs, rear doors. You get some more six and a halfs. So these are going to be my representation of the doors. Dashboard, head unit. He's also going to invest in a fifth channel for his sub. And he's going to also going to have two amplifiers in this scenario. So, factory setup, you have the two three-inch dash speakers, front six and a half, rear six and a half. Factory head unit, which is going to be gone. Um, all four speakers are going to be gone. The two amplifiers, Ed already has, sitting, waiting to go. And he also has a fifth uh, bandpass enclosure, which is tuned at 80 hertz. I've already talked to you about that, so I'm not going to waste time on that. The problem is for Ed. He's already went ahead and he's done his speakers. Now when he go ahead and did them, he said, you know, what do you think about what I've done? And I've already covered with you, Ed, that you should have done better on the fronts. He converted his front uh, coaxials, which were a three-way, and I told him it was a really bad choice because the speaker's going to sound only good if you're bent down picking up stuff off your rug because then the music is ear level. I said, what you should do is ditch that and get yourself a set of component speakers so he has a one-inch Silk Dome Treater, he has a six and a half inch mid-base driver, so he's got a pretty good front stage, even with the absence of the three and a halfs, which are the ones that are giving him the trouble. The rear fill, he's got the three ways again, and that's just fine, I have no problem with that. He likes bright sound, and I, I'm a fan of bright sound as well, especially with my hearing, after all these years. His rear fill is taken care of. Now, he's got a four channel amplifier, so he's got power in front, left and right, rear, left and right. These speakers are also in parallel to the fronts as well. So here's what happens. The factory head unit was fine when it only had a mild 15 watts of power. All the speakers played fine, no problem. When he got a real amplifier and he started to put 120 watts RMS into his front stage, these speakers started distorting wicked as soon as he starts to put the radio beyond five. So he's not enjoying what he could be had he had it wired a little bit differently. So the problem arises was should he just get rid of them altogether Go with the component speakers and leave it at that? Possibly. You could do that, but there's another way to do it. I would suggest upgrading these to a, a slightly better type of speaker because factory speakers, I mean, this is actually a pyramid, a pyramid speaker. It's a 312 SX. I'll show you. Really super cheap kind of speaker, dual cone, wizard cone. Um, you can see, obviously, the speakers can, can, can't even, it has no, no option for excursion at all. This speaker should never play low frequencies. So this amplifier, the four channel, is running at full range. So this speaker is getting basically in the whole e full range spectrum of sound from 1 hertz to 15,000 hertz. These speakers are getting the whole breadth of the sound frequency spectrum. That's bad. These speakers should never play a subsonic or a super low subsonic type of frequency because it's going to make the speaker want to move. And once it does the moving, the movement equals distortion. Distortion equals anger. In, in, uh, in Ed's life. So let's just try to work on getting rid of that. So here's my solution. What I think you should do, Ed, is this. Upgrade these three, these three and a halfs to a, a good aftermarket brand. There's lots of them out there. I'm not going to decide on what you should choose. There's plenty to choose from. Once you have that done, I'm going to suggest that you take the, the head units front left and front right outputs. Disconnect this so your, your three and a halfs are no longer in parallel to your front component speakers any longer. Run two new leads from your front right to your front right, front left to your front left. Now on the, on the positive leg, I'm going to suggest that you cut that and put a base blocker in there, which are these. Let me show you. I don't know if you're familiar with these, but this here is a set of Stinger base blockers. They make them in all different types of uh, styles, sizes. Um, Impedance matching scenarios, um, wattage applications. This one here is rated for 60 watts RMS at 4 ohms. This will block 800 hertz and lower. So again, going back to this, the sound spectrum, 
anything from 1 hertz up to about 800 hertz, all of this will be blocked out from these little speakers, creating these to allow them to play 800 hertz and up, and all the destructive frequencies of 800 hertz and lower will be eliminated from it. They would run at a lower wattage output than these, because these ones here will be running at 120 watts RMS. This one here is running, I don't know, realistically, say, 150 watts, you know, with all the other variables. Maybe it's running 12 watts RMS. So these speakers here are running at four times um, much wattage as these are. So that's good because, you know, you, you don't want these to still get too much power, but you want to get enough to get the effect of the front stage effect. You want that, but you don't want too much. That's where you can have to go into adjusting the gains on your amplifiers a little bit, tweaking it, making everything sound nice, nice. Especially when your vehicle is big, it's wide, you want to kind of get everything to sound right. My trick is to sit in your, dri your driver's seat, close your eyes, and move your head to the right and to the left. If everything sounds equal while you're moving your head around, you've got it right. If you can hear too much when you go right, and it gets too low when you go left, you know you need to adjust. So that's another way to do it. You can do the same thing with the, with the front and rear. However. Uh, I've never been a really big fan of rear fill. I usually like my rear fill down about 65% as opposed to 100% on the front because I want the rear fill to be just that, a rear fill. So this might be a good scenario. So if you got these things running, that should be your money right there. That's your front stage, your rear fill, and up here you're going to get a nice little center stage presence. It should sound nice. Would you still have to fill it out? This thing should be fantastic. So there's my fix for, the, for your uh, little conundrum there, Ed. I wish you luck and let me know how it works out because I would love to hear how it goes. And if you have a question about your own scenario, where you have a problem, something like this, or wiring, or impedance matching, and you know, whatever it may be, if I can help you out in some way like I did for Ed today, that would be great. If you liked the video, give me a like. If you didn't like it, you know what? Give me a like. Either way. Um, that's it. Good luck, Ed.